What is up, Mythicals? It is Minotaurus here, and I am here to bring you some slightly scuffed content. If you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button, and if you want to become an official, official Mythical, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, wow, we got a lot to talk about. Um, obviously, because like my whole setup is kind of jank right now. Um, when I mean scuff content, I don't mean my background is scuffed. It, it'll get better, okay? I, I got a reason for it, alright? So much has happened in the past, like, few weeks. Like, so much. Um, first off, on April 14th, which is my birthday, I moved apartments. Woo! <laughs> and I'm still moving in. Hence why you see all of this stuff behind me. And there's a reason why it hasn't really been done, finished yet. So, moving. Yeah, that was something. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my movers were not the sharpest tools in the shed. But hey, you know what? Whatever. I I'm going to... I'm going to overlook that. I guess. Um, I have, like, this antique dresser thing like side table and uh the top of it is pure marble and it was gifted to me from a family friend um there's like an actual dresser there's the end table and then there was a bed too but we we got rid of the bed because the bed was completely square and you can't find sheets and stuff that are meant for perfectly square beds because we now have rectangle beds not square beds um <laughs> And, and so, um, currently in my possession, um, the, the actual dresser is at my parents' house right now, uh, but I have the end table, and, uh, it was gifted to me by some, uh, really good friends of my family, and it came off of a farm from the early 1800s, um, in, in Missouri. So, it, it's really cool, it's so gorgeous, and so there's like the top that's like pure marble and then it has like these little like this like backing that kind of it goes like around the back like, i don't know how to explain this um you know what i will take a picture of it and insert it here so that, that way you can see what i'm trying to talk about they're trying to sit yeah okay bear with me this is rough all right i i haven't done youtube in like a few weeks okay i'm getting back into the swing of things anyways the movers broke part of it. So, that happened. They broke the marble top. I mean, to be fair, it had a crack in it already because the screw that goes in to like hold the top down uh, is so old. And it like trying to screw it in caused a little crack. So, it's not entirely their fault. There is partially, like, my fault in that. But now it's broken. So, it's not, like, unfixable. I'll just probably just have to hot glue it back together and stick a cute little picture frame or something in front of it so you can't see. But I'm really upset by that. So, that happened. And then, I guess that was about it. Overall, the, the, the move in general was pretty smooth. Um, and I'm loving my new apartment. I have an official, like, room dedicated to streaming, which makes me so happy, and I cannot wait to get it all set up. Um, so over here, like, on this wall that you see, I have a couple of, like, really cool band posters that I would like to frame and kind of put up over here, and then behind me, I plan on getting, like, a neon, like, LED sign that says Minnow's Labyrinth, and then where you see, like, all this crap over here, uh, that's gonna be moved out of the way, and then I want to get, like, a nice big, like, plant, and, like, just really make it kind of homey and spacious and, and things like that, and then there's a ton of space between, like, where I'm sitting and, like, the bookshelf behind me that you can kind of see over, over here, and, uh, because I have, like, a lot of space, I would like to get a green screen to kind of help out with YouTube stuff or anything else that I see would be a good fit to use a green screen for with the content I'm making. Um, and I plan on getting, like, one of the one, like, the one, one of the green screens that you can, like, pull up and then you can contract and then, like, move out of the way kind of thing. So, um, I have, like, a lot of space for, for that. And I'm just really excited to get everything set up behind me so that way 
I can feel a little bit more confident and like comfortable with the content I'm making because right now this looks like crap. Like, I mean, this is probably like the worst vlog ever. You suck! but um like e probably even better than my first vlog which if you haven't seen you can check that out like up above so th there's that I'm still kind of moving in the reason I haven't fully moved in and unboxed is that life got really crazy like four days after I moved so my one of my really good friends her birthday is like a week after mine so sometimes like we kind of celebrate our birthdays like in between so it's like a belated birthday for me and an early birthday for her and this year we decided you know what let's go out let's get some drinks yeah I also got a tattoo I'll post a picture of that right here <laughs> so I got a tattoo or whatever that, that that was fun this has not like the tattoo has nothing to do with the reason like the incident that happened to me um, not at all. Okay, just throwing that out there. I, I actually took it like a champ. Um, I, I kept being told that like the rib cage was gonna hurt, and it did in some areas. But for the like majority of the time, it tickled, and I was trying so hard not to laugh so I didn't mess up the the artist. So there's that. But um, I guess you know. What? Okay, before we get into the incident, I'll explain a little bit about my tattoo really quick. So if you're not familiar, it is the Ouroboros and the. I've never heard anyone say this out loud, so I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like flamel, flamel, F-L-A-M-E-L. If you know how to pronounce it, let me know down in the comments because I feel dumb not knowing. They're the two symbols that you see in the anime Full Metal Alchemist, which is one of the first animes I ever watched and is the reason I even got into anime. And then later on, I eventually saw FMA Brotherhood, which I absolutely loved, and I prefer Brotherhood over the other FMA. But uh, I told myself that at some point in my 20s, I wanted to get a nerdy tattoo to kind of symbolize just this nerdy journey that I've been on. Nerd! And I, I watched, I guess... Full Metal Alchemist and kind of got into anime like in my early 20s. I want to say like I was maybe 19, 20. Like, I guess legit like the beginning of my 20s. So here we are. And, uh, you know, almost at the end of my, my, my like 20s. Yes, that. <laughs> almost at the end of my 20s. And I finally got the tattoo. So I'm really excited about that. And, uh, yeah. So that, that's just a little bit about that. Anyways. The same day I get the tattoo. <sighs> Man, okay, so we went out to this really cool, trendy bar in Austin. Not gonna name names. And they had these really cool, like, swings that you could sit on. Keep in mind, we've only been there for like maybe 10, 15 minutes. I haven't even had a chance to take a drink out of my drink because it comes in like this really cool cup and. I was getting selfies with it, like, all throughout the bar, and, like, we were just having a good time, all right? And then the swings are outside, so we have our drinks, and we're finally done taking pictures indoors. We want to go chill outside on the swings. So we get out there, and they have, like, this leftover St. Patrick's Day, like, swing-themed thing. And this swing is huge. It sits two people. Like, clearly sits two people. There's also no sign that says... Like, no standing on the swings, no more than one person on the swing, like, none of that. Like, there was no sign of any sorts. So, there's that. We sit down on the swing that sits two people. All the other swings, I believe, just sit one person, like, per swing. So, like, the others are kind of small. This is, like, a bigger one. And the, the swing kind of, like, jolted, I guess is the best way to, like, like refer to what happened um so like like the swing was being held by like i'm trying to explain as best as i can there's like four bolts that go like in each corner of the rectangle part of the seat of the swing right so the back bolts that's sitting like that would be like closest to like behind me um that side kind of jolted a little bit and made the swing kind of like shift <laughs> and I ended up spilling my drink I still haven't even had a chance to try my drink yet 
and half of it like spills out so like we're laughing and giggling, so the assumption is probably that, like, my friend and I are, are like, completely drunk, but we're not. We had just gotten there. We were, like, still 100%, 100% sober. We haven't really tried our drinks yet. Pick up my drink, put the lid back on it, we're good, right? So now, my friend and I still haven't taken a drink yet, because we're not done taking selfies and stuff. Like, we look cute. I look cute-ish. Whatever. We looked cute. We wanted to, like, just make memories, capture the moment of us celebrating our birthdays. So we are trying to get a cute little video on the swing. And next thing I know, I'm on the ground and people are trying to get the swing off of me. Remember when I said that the swing jolted a little bit and it, like, made me spill my drink? Well, that whole section of the swing right behind me came undone. The bolt just came out. I flew backwards and hit my head on concrete and I busted my head open blacked out for like not very long but long enough to be like where like my body was just like your head hurts so hold it so like I'm holding my like the back of my head and I remember like I can't totally speak yet I'm still like kind of disoriented like what just happened and I remember the swing getting stuck on my shoe and I wanted to tell the guy helping me, like, my shoe is caught, my shoe is caught, like, my foot's caught on the swing, and I couldn't get my words out just yet. And then, um, so, like, there was a couple sitting next to us. The guy was helping me, and then it just so happened the, the woman was a nurse, and so she helps me up. And so, before I kind of continue with that, um, my friend was totally okay. Uh, she had, like, maybe some bruising, like, on her arm or something, um, what had kind of happened and, like, saved her and why I wasn't able to catch and, like, break my fall. Uh, so she had her hand holding onto one side of the swing and then her uh, other hand was holding the phone. And so she was able to, like, kind of catch herself because she was holding onto the swing. I had my drink in one hand and my I was holding my purse in the other. So when the swing fell, both of my hands were full and I had no way of breaking my fall. So that there's that. The thing is, is, the swing wasn't sitting high up either, but it was just enough that, like, I hit my head really hard on the concrete, and it was, like, the, the dome of my head, like, on the back. Anyways, thankfully, the woman sitting next to me was a nurse, and everyone sitting outside was like, oh my god, are you okay? And <laughs> me being the champ that I am, I guess, was like, I'm fine. And I just start laughing. Because, like, everyone's staring at me, so I feel like I'm in an awkward situation, and... I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm gonna just walk it off. It'll be fine. And the nurse was like, are you sure your head's not bleeding? I was like, nah, it's not bleeding. It's fine. And so, like, but keep in mind, my head is still telling me, your head hurts. Hold it. So, I had my hair up in a ponytail. So, I, like, move, like, the ponytail out of the way. And I go to hold my head again. And after I said, no, it's not bleeding, and I take my hand away, and it's covered in blood. And so, the whole thing just changed. The whole situation changed. And by then, the manager of the bar had come out. So rude. So rude. He, uh, <laughs> he, he offered my friend and I to, like refill our drinks on the house didn't ask if i was okay didn't ask if i needed an ambulance didn't help me none of that he was more concerned about like our drinks being refilled and us like resuming having a good time and i'm like my hand is covered in blood my head is bleeding the last thing i need right now is another drink okay like i didn't even get to enjoy the first one but that's fine I, I ended up not calling an ambulance. One, kind of expensive. Two, I just didn't want that kind of attention. My friend was totally sober, so I trusted that she could drive me to the hospital. And the hospital was not far from where we were, so thankfully. <laughs> and um, so there's that. The nurse was just like, yeah, like if your skull is cracked, if any internal bleeding, here are the signs to look out for on the way to the hospital. Thankfully, none of those, sh none of those signs appeared. We get to the hospital, and I was actually in and out rather quickly, which I was pretty surprised. And I say in and out rather quickly. I was there for maybe like an hour and a half, which is really short for a hospital time. <laughs> I ended up having to get four staples put in my head. Um, I guess, little warning, 
I'm gonna count to five so you can look away. All right, you can listen, but you can look away in case you just get like grossed out and disturbed by pictures, okay? So one, two, three, four, and five. Look away. This is my head with staples. And yeah, it was freaking painful. And as you can see, uh, <laughs> my hair's dyed pink in the back of my head. So it was really hard to find the wound because like the blood was mixing in with the pink and <laughs> it was hard. It was difficult. Anyways, okay. If you looked away, you can, you can look back now. Okay, it, it's safe. Picture's gone. So we're good. <laughs> But, yeah, so that happened. Um, turns out I was really concussed as well. So that happened. And this is just a few days after I moved. I've barely unboxed anything. So I was, like, out of commission for a bit. And <laughs> I didn't get to stream unboxing my apartment. And I was so tired. I slept so much, which I got, like, confirmation from the hospital. It was okay to sleep. Like, kind of stay awake, like, the first night, and then after that, I'll probably be okay if, like, I don't, you know, experience any other issues. So, that kind of sucked because I was so mentally and physically drained and exhausted. I mean, th it's head trauma. That takes it out of you. And... <laughs> So, uh, obviously, I'm okay, but it was difficult to stay awake um, that first night. And then after that, I was okay. Um, and then that whole week sucked. I was just, I had really bad migraines. My head hurt. The staples were not fun. I couldn't brush my hair hardly, so I couldn't really style it. And washing my hair was difficult. And so I just, it wasn't a good time. Uh, thankfully, my, my parents came to visit the following weekend. They helped me unbox and kind of get um, a huge chunk of my apartment put together. And then 10 days after the accident, I got my staples removed, which was two days before I went to Vegas. And thankfully, I did not want to go to Vegas with staples in my head. Um, <laughs> so now we're on to like week three of what like of my life, my crazy past few weeks. So last week, May 1st through May 7th, I was in Vegas and oh my God, it was, it was amazing. I had so much fun. I've never been to Vegas before. I just tagged along with a friend who had some work out in Vegas. He will be moving out there soon. And it was, oh my gosh, y'all like, I miss Vegas so much. I fell in love with that place within like five minutes of being there. It's just absolutely gorgeous with all the lights, but like not just the lights, the mountains. Being surrounded by mountains all the time like remind me so much of my childhood. Uh, I grew up in the middle of the desert out in West Texas and I was surrounded by mountains in some of the places I would visit a lot as a kid and like, that was my happy place. I love being around mountains. I love dry heat. I cannot stand humidity, and I can't stand cold weather. I love hot, dry heat. Born and raised in a desert, so it kind of makes sense. And <laughs> being out in Vegas reminded me a lot of that. Dry heat, mountains, desert climate, like, yes, it was a win for everything. Also, my allergies were, like, nowhere near as bad in Vegas as they are, like, here in Texas and being in Austin. So, that was a plus to have, like, a week break from allergies <laughs> for the most part. And, yeah, it was, it was incredible. So, uh, I guess first things first, um, one of the coolest things I went to was Area 15. And if you're not familiar with Area 15, it's, kind of like this art exhibit thing but there's like multiple buildings and multiple exhibits you can go to you have the main portion you can walk into for free but then each exhibit that you want to visit you have to pay for so the exhibit that my friend and i chose to go to was called omega mart and it's like this really cool futuristic like sci-fi type grocery store everything is just so wild and out there and in a way, like a weird way, I kind of got like, don't hug me, I'm scared vibes when like 
weird things would kind of happen. So, like, for example, there'd be, like, some kind of, like, sound thing that would go off on, like, an intercom, and all of the employees at Omega Mart, or the actors, would, like, stop whatever they are doing and just, like, break down. And then there would be, like, something that they had like these little tvs around the store and so then there would be like some kind of broadcast that would come on and it would be like really weird and trippy and sci-fi and stuff and then as soon as the broadcast ended the 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 employees would like come back to life and like readjust a little bit like they're robotic and then they'd be like hi how can i help you are you finding everything okay and like it was just it was weird, but it was so cool. I was like, I want to work here. This place looks like, oh my god, it, it was just mind blowing. And so all of their like products were kind of weird. There was like a meat product that's like pictured here uh, that reminded me a lot of um, like the little hand thing, like parasite thing, and Parasite the Maxim. If you're familiar with that anime, um, and then they just had like I don't know oddball things. I don't even know how to explain it. You just kind of have to like see this for yourself. So then in like the frozen section or like the freezer section of the store there's like this one part where you like open the the door and then you like go through like this really cool tunnel and then it like opens up to this huge exhibit behind like omega mart it's all omega mart but like this was cool um there were like these tunnels that had like these really cool like rgb lights going everywhere and each room had just all these cool lighting and props and just artistic looking things on the wall. Like there was, oh my god, if you have like ADHD and like lots of squirrel moments, this is the place for you. Because there is so much to look at. And like there's no specific order or way that you like have to view all of this. You can just like be like, oh my god, that looks cool, go look at it. Oh my god, that looks cool, go look at it. Because that's exactly what I did. I have so many squirrel moments in my life. And this was just like, oh, it was like being a kid in a candy store with all the lights and like just the art and just the music, the sounds, just everything. And then one of the really cool things that they had was like this mystery kind of game that you can play and you had to figure out what happened to this missing girl and so you start gathering clues and you're like watching videos on these really cool like old but sci-fi futuristic looking like computers and tv screens and stuff like that and it the story gave me like midsummer vibes if you've seen that movie which is a really disturbing movie and this is kind of a really disturbing story, too, like, when you're trying to figure out what happened to this missing girl, because she wasn't, like, born into this world, like, natural, like, mom and dad love each other, baby! It wasn't like that. It was like this woman discovers, like, this cult thing or something, and she drinks this juice stuff, and then she somehow gets, like, pregnant, kind of like some kind of weird warped version of like the Virgin Mary kind of thing and this lady is like cuckoo in the head too they don't have TED talks they have like lead talks LED lead talks anyways and it was like insane how she would be giving these talks and she would be so convincing of like this weird stuff that she was just into and these people were buying it and they even had, like, at one point, these protesters that would, like, run across the screen being, like, anti-blah-blah-blah, whatever's happening. And it was crazy. And I'm not spoiling, like, too much of this. Like, if you haven't experienced it, definitely just go and experience this for yourself. Um, I'm not even giving away, like, half the story. Like, there's so much detail in everything that goes into it. Um, unfortunately, I never found out what happened to the girl. And there's a specific reason for that, too. Because you have to go to Area 15 in Denver to get the rest of the story. I don't know if that's good marketing or bad marketing, but I'm seeing another trip in my future. Because the story is so intriguing, I need to know what happens. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, that was kind of like my experience with um, Omega Mart. Uh, there's just some really cool, like rooms that you could go into there was one um if you follow me on tiktok which is linked down below <coughs> just let you know there was this cool room that had like 
all like the whole all the walls were like glass or whatever and then it had like a strobe light and um i was thinking about putting it in this video but i'm not going to well maybe i don't know by the time you're watching this i will have already made a decision so there's that <laughs> Uh, but aside from the Area 15, um, we went to this really cool, like, karaoke bar. We loved it so much, we ended up going there three times while we were there. And it it was just fun. It was like, I've never been to a karaoke bar quite like this before. And I love going to karaoke. Getting me up there on stage to sing is a different story. I didn't sing at all at this karaoke bar, like, on stage, but I was definitely singing like in the crowd and it it's just like the ocean run of the moon it's the same as the emotion that i get from you got the kind of love that can be so smooth and give me your heart make it real let's forget about it and it felt like you're at a concert too which was really odd like the person could be so bad at singing but you felt like you were at like this really good fun hyped up concert because the MCs do such a good job at this place and then the bar like overlooks Fremont Street which was really cool so if you're ever in Vegas go check out Cat's Meow it was so much fun absolutely loved it shout out to them they know exactly what they're doing for a karaoke bar more bars need to be like this if you're going to have a karaoke bar okay take note <laughs> um i wish i had like more footage of the bar but i don't unfortunately i was too busy singing okay don't come at me with that but definitely check out cat's meow and then gosh what else um we went to this really cool like party um my friend that i was with his friend was a performer at this party and it was like nothing I'd ever been to before. For one, I'm not much of a party girl. I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm an introvert, okay? Like I don't get out a whole lot. I'm more like an omnivert, I guess. Like if I'm around people I know, I'm pretty outgoing. And if I'm in a setting that I feel truly comfortable in, like it's in my element, like, like for example, a metal show or something, then I can be pretty outgoing. Uh, but for the most part, I don't leave the house a whole lot. So there's that. So being at this party, I had a lot of social anxiety at first, but it, it calmed down because everyone was so nice there. And in general, people in Vegas are really freaking nice. Like, <laughs> I got told, you look so pretty. Oh my gosh, you're gorgeous. Are you a model? Like, just all these things. Like, it was insane. I had never gotten so many compliments before that I didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> but it made me feel good. It was definitely a confidence booster, that's for sure. So if you need a confidence booster, I guess Vegas is the place to go. But this party was insane. And, like, the performers were so cool. So here's a couple of, like, videos and clips that you'll see of some of the performers and doing their flow art, I believe is what it was called. And I even attended one of the flow art classes. My friend's friend, who is now my friend, you might need to slow that down, rewind it, and figure out the order of that. Um, anyways, my friend's friend, who is now my friend, we, um, or not we, but she teaches a flow art class, so I attended one of her classes, and I was not good at all, but who's good at anything they do for the first time, unless you're like Mozart, okay? But I attended the flow art class, it was a lot of fun, um, food. Oh my gosh, I had like a lot of amazing food. I like from vegan to just not vegan food. Like it was amazing. Um, we went to this pizza place and I think that was probably my favorite place that I ate at the entire week. I don't remember the name of the pizza place, but it was off of the strip. And um, it was near the Razor store. So if you're a gamer or into tech and stuff, then you probably have heard of the brand Razer. Um, it was like really close to that store off the strip. And <laughs> the pizza was incredible. The little salad thing that we got, I think it was like a tomato capri. Is that how you say it? I don't know. It sounded fancy. 
it was so good. But yeah, so I guess that was kind of like a little summary of my Vegas trip, and yeah. Um, <laughs> man, that was a lot to get caught up on. I am finally back. I, It's been, I guess, one week from today coming back from Vegas, like when I'm filming this. So yeah, it's been a week um, kind of transitioning back into streaming again and working. I work full time and then I stream and do YouTube and all this part time. But yeah, kind of getting back into that routine while still kind of getting my apartment set up here and there. So bear with me. The next few videos are not going to have the best background ever. <laughs> It'll get better with time. Just bear with me on that. All right. Uh, but I do stream on Twitch. So I feel like this is a good segue. I stream on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 8 p.m. Central to around midnight. And I play all sorts of games. Lately, I've been playing a lot of horror games, which is kind of like my focus. I love playing horror, especially indie horror games. So if you're into content like that and, or games like that, then that's probably your thing. You should come check me out. But I also do all sorts of stuff. I, I like doing makeup streams. I like doing cooking streams. Sometimes I might do art streams. I'm not very good at art, but I try. And that's all that matters. <laughs> and I play just all kinds of games. So I guess essentially I'm a variety streamer. But my emphasis is on horror. Uh, coming up within the next like week or so, I plan to play Resident Evil 7, Outlast 2, and Resident Evil 8. So that is the plan. Scheduled to change. Or subject to change. <laughs> but anyways, um, here is my Twitch link. You can check that out if you're interested. Clickable link is down below in the description. And I guess that's about it. Uh, I will catch you all in my next video. Bye, guys.